Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a brief history of Jupiter and specifically we're going to talk about how once upon a time, a long time ago, this actually used to be a habitable water world. What? That's right. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And this is actually based on a completely new study from 2017 by uh, John Chambers, a researcher at C uh, Carnegie Institution for Science in uh, Washington, D.C. And he actually analyzed um, the creation of various gas giants and used various simulations and different models to try to predict what they used to be like and what actually happened on those um, gas giants early on in the beginning of the solar system. So let's actually visualize all of this by creating a brand new and very, very young solar system with the sun in the middle and the accretion disk that then will turn into planets and various asteroids with time. So you can kind of see that there's these chunks of asteroids here. I didn't really make them specifically any size because I just wanted to help you visualize what actually happened. So somewhere at a distance of several astronomical units, this is where uh, Jupiter started to accrete and basically started to become a larger and larger rock that eventually would dominate all of the other rocks. Here we're actually, we're going to represent this with a randomly generated um, rocky planet at a distance of about, let's just say, seven, or maybe, yeah, let's just say seven astronomical units, right there. So this is going to be our Jupiter. This is kind of what it looks like. And basically it's, it's a combination of, um, I guess, rocks and also water. So there's water and rocks here. But the thing is, at some point, when it reaches the mass of about seven moons, and as it accretes more and more mass, um, it's actually going to acquire just enough uh, pressure and just enough amount of material to start kind of emitting some of this ice water, which will eventually result in something really interesting. It will actually start um, basically uh, subliming and creating water atmosphere. So. This water atmosphere is what will actually turn this into a water world. And we're going to simulate this by adding atmosphere right now. And by basically changing some of the parameters until the Jupiter starts getting liquid water. So the atmospheric pressure here will start growing larger and larger because more and more ice is um, fall on the, onto the planet. The pressure inside of this uh, planet starts to melt the ice and liquefies it. And then, um, because there's no other air present here, water and a lot of other liquids that might be on the surface start sub sublimating and uh, creating atmosphere that's mostly water vapor. And water vapor is a very, very, very potent um, greenhouse gas. So it starts warming up this planet quite dramatically. And you'll notice that the surface temperature here is basically skyrocketing because the surface pressure has increased so much. So as this happens, this planet will start transforming and it starts transforming relatively quickly. Actually, this only takes it about a few million years. And, and then for the next few million years, as it grows more and more bigger and bigger and more and more massive, it acquires more mass, it acquires more ice, it acquires more atmosphere and starts creating this very, very beautiful liquid world of basically water. Now, this is what Jupiter was like for at least uh, a few hundred thousand years and possibly even a few million years. It basically was a liquid world. And even though it was relatively far from, uh, from our sun, it was basically acquiring mass and water and uh, pressure for maintaining this atmosphere from all of these particles uh, that you see orbiting around it. So basically it was absorbing the accretion disk material. But what's interesting here is that its mass was far from even the mass of Earth. As a matter of fact, the mass where it started doing this was only about 0.1 or even 0.04 or about 8% 8, 8 of mass of Earth. And as the mass increased, obviously the other parameters increased as well but it uh, probably maintained this state for quite a long time, possibly even until it reached about uh, two, two, maybe five masses of Earth. And when that happens, this is when it starts transforming. So basically up until about two masses of Earth, 
it's going to maintain its um, habitable state. So in this case, it kind of froze over because I believe our atmosphere decreased a little bit. But we can return it back to the habitable state by increasing the atmosphere. But so, yeah, at this point where it becomes really large, so maybe up to about five masses of Earth, this is where something starts happening and it starts changing into a gas giant. And it's mostly because the pressure inside is so great that the water is no longer liquid. As a matter of fact, it starts acting like a kind of a supercritical fluid. And on top of this, because the mass of this planet is so much larger now, it's basically at least two to possibly five masses of Earth, it starts attracting more and more and more mass from around um, itself. We can demonstrate this by launching a few random asteroids here. Um, and as all of this starts happening, it starts growing exponentially. It basically starts acquiring so much mass, possibly not uh, as many explosions would actually happen, but it basically starts um, vacuum, vacuuming up the massive amounts of mass from nearby. And at this point, it starts absorbing things like hydrogen and helium and... So, ooh, that was too fast. And slowly, okay, let's do this slowly. Slowly, didn't work. Slowly transforms into a gas giant. And the more mass it has, the more stuff it absorbs. And this is going to keep going until it reaches the mass of about 318 masses of Earth, which is the mass of Jupiter as we know it. Now, this process was obviously not super fast, but it was a process that occurred in four objects in our solar system and possibly even five, because there is a hypothesis that I spoke about previously that suggests there was a fifth um, gas giant. But anyway, so this is what we think happened to our Jupiter. And notice how we actually were able to create Jupiter with an actual eye of Jupiter, or I guess a great, spot of, a great red spot of Jupiter. Uh, completely by accident. And so now, this is a well-developed gas giant as we know it today. And some of the other materials that orbited um, with Jupiter basically became its moons. So this is how the moons of Jupiter were formed. And it actually ended up swallowing quite a lot of those moons early on. Uh, but the ones that survived stayed with it until today. Well, that's kind of all I wanted to discuss in this video, because... I thought it was a really important new finding and it kind of gives us a new understanding of how solar system was formed in the beginning and actually creates a new possibility that maybe just maybe life in our solar system actually did start on these gas giants and then somehow through what's known as panspermia managed to be transferred to other planets including Earth. Those are obviously speculations but you never know. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you learned something about it. Jupiter, and now we know a little bit more about gas giants and how they actually form from these very interesting terrestrial worlds that are technically habitable. Obviously, not all of them go through the habitable stage, but Jupiter definitely did. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye. And don't forget to come back tomorrow to learn something else.